So we covered rounds one and two in our mock draft so far, but let's look into round three. What do you think the Washington Commanders are going to do in round three? Well, I've got a couple of options here, and we're going to go over it right now. Hey everybody, welcome back to another video here on the Washington Football Maniacs channel. If you're new here, my name is Greg. Thank you for joining us. Uh, please consider subscribing if you're enjoying the content. With that said, let's get into today's video. So we covered in our last couple of videos, round one and round two in our mock drafts. Now we've been talking about how that, uh, at least in my opinion, I prefer for the Washington Commanders to go full on BPA, which means best player available in the Washington Commanders draft for this year. Uh, with that said, there were some options that I thought that we could go with. Uh, those options being either with the offensive line um, or possibly with the linebacker core, the secondary, and then tight ends. And we looked at tight ends. We looked at linebacker core. And we looked at certainly the offensive line. We didn't really look a lot in the cornerback position because in other mock drafts, we they have us taking a corner in the first round. And that could certainly throw off any of our mocks that we're thinking of. Uh, but continuing on with the thought process of maybe in the first round, we're going to go offensive line. And then in the second round, I'm thinking Eric Bannemey Again, he seems to be the one. He's going to be, of course, the assistant head coach. So I think he's going to have a lot of input in this year's draft. So that's why I feel like, at least in the first couple of rounds, we're going to be looking at more of the needs on offense. But if you're seeing a better player, a better offensive player um, available when it comes time for the Washington Commanders to choose, I think it's going to be offense over defense. I just that's my thought process, and so that's why in the second round I went with the uh, Kincaid pick for tight end because I feel like we do need a tight end, and I think if he's available, that would be the best choice. Now you could also argue in the first round if for some reason if the running back um, Robinson happens to be available, everybody seems to have us tied with him. Now, he is one of those, what we're considering a generational type of player. Someone else has compared him to Ed, Ed, Edgerin James as far as, you know, that style of running back. So maybe you do pick him up. Again, if he is available, he probably would be the best player available at that spot. I don't know if I see him dropping that far, but possibly. So what do we see for round three? Well... What a lot of people seem to be having um, us pick in round three, and if I can get to it, um, in one mock draft, we are seeing the commanders having going with a tight end. Now, this means that if we go with the tight end, this would be the tight end of South Dakota, Tucker Craft. So if we went with tight end in the third round, obviously that means we're not going with Kincaid in the second round. Now I say obvious, who knows, maybe we pick up two tight ends. I can't see that happening though. I think if we pick up Kincaid in the, in the second round, then obviously I think we are looking at um, possibly Dominique Robinson, maybe an edge rusher. Now that's a, that's a unique choice, Greg. Why would you choose another edge rusher? Well, here's the reason why. I think that, you know, there's a lot of talk about Chase Young. How is he going to be able to uh, you know, come back after that injury? You know, he he didn't look like the Chase Young of his rookie season coming back last year. But at the same time, he didn't look that badly to me. I mean, I thought he made some plays. He certainly had his presence felt, I think, in the game. But, you know, 
he didn't have very many games to really work himself back in. So I think it's going to take a while for him to get back in there. And what seemed to work for Jack Del Rio is that constant of switching edge rushers in and out on that other side when Chase Young was out. And it really worked when we had um, you know guys healthy on that side. So I think Dominique Robinson could be another possible guy in there who, who you know, could definitely um, help to bolster that in case Chase Young happens to, let's say we trade him for an area of need because we've proven that we don't necessarily need Chase Young, that we can still have a dominant def- defensive front without Chase Young. Just with Chase Young, it makes it such a defensive dominant front that it's almost I've said it before it's almost unfair and so I really think that that could be an area it's not necessarily an area of need it's best player available I think possibly in that position if you go edge rusher a third round but it is definitely a unique choice Um, and I think again you go with that if you go with tight end in the second round I mean I'm hoping tight end in the second round because, again, a teeter-totter toward, uh, you know, an area of need and certainly a player that is the best player available at that position. But um, I really feel like that we could use a good pass-receiving tight end. I don't know if, I I don't know how well that Logan Thomas is going to be this year. You know, coming back from his injury, Um, You know, he came back midway through last season, really didn't, really didn't provide a lot of presence uh, overall. But then again, you know, you're talking about uh, change-ups of of, uh, quarterbacks. It seems like uh, the tight ends were not targeted as much uh, when, uh, when you had, um, Taylor Heineke in there, as opposed to when you had um, uh, Carson Wentz in there. Carson seemed like he liked targeting the tight ends a lot more than receivers. And then you had Heineke in there who targeted the receivers more. And so that could have been part of the reason why we didn't really see a lot of Logan Thomas. But I think Logan just, it was going to take a while to work him slowly back in into that lineup. So I think you definitely, you need to find players you can draft to replace him. And Kincaid, I still feel like that that's probably an area that they're going to wind up addressing. Uh, So, and I think it could be an area that they address in the second round, which would leave that area in the third round. They don't have to go pass rusher. I just think if that's the best player available, go ahead and pick that because who knows, who knows what's going to happen with Chase Young. Um, if it winds up that Chase Young is the dominant player that he was in, you know, 2020, and he's that way in 2023, then great. We've got tremendous depth at that defensive line. It's just going to help solidify that defense even more. And again, you're building a great championship team, and all championship teams have one thing in common. they got depth at every position. It's never a bad thing to, ha- to to really have. So, folks, let me know in the comments section what you think in round three. Hey, I mean, it's in two weeks, so I, I can't wait. Get your popcorn ready. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you did. Hey, let me know if you didn't. Doesn't matter. I'll see you in the next one. Hey, you stayed until the very end. Thank you so much. Watch another one right now.